It's Always the Quiet Ones by Holy. Gilda sat perched on a cloud overlooking Ponyville. She seethed in anger over the events of the last hour. Not only had she ruined her only chance to try to relate with the ponies, she had lost her longest and only friend in the process. She was too mad to care. Some friend rainbow dashes. No second chance. No, sorry for pulling all those pranks. Just get out. She thought. It tore her up that she lost it on Pinky. As much of Dash's fault it was for getting under her skin with those pranks that really shouldn't have been at a welcome party in the first place, she regretted blowing it. It was too late now anyway, so it didn't matter. And I thought she was supposed to be the element of loyalty. What a joke. She thought with a smug laugh that quickly turned to a sigh. She turned around and faced the forest. With a quick leap, she glided to wherever her wings would take her, hoping to start somewhere new. Gilda? Hey, G, uh, are you still here? A voice that could only belong to Rainbow Dash yelled out for her. She turned around with a scowl at her ex-friend. Luckily, she hadn't seen her yet, so she picked up her speed hoping to leave her behind before she got to yell at her for being too cool. There you are, G. Get back here, I need to talk to you. Gilda didn't look back as she put her wings on full throttle. What are you doing? I just want to talk to you. Rainbow took off after her. Rainbow had always been a bit faster than Gilda, but that wasn't about to stop her from trying to shake her. Buzz off, loser. I don't want to hear it. Gilda could tell she was gaining on her fast. She pushed herself harder and the wind began to sting against her face. Gee, just let me talk to you. She was close enough to grab the end of her tail now. Gilda realized she was fighting a losing battle. No. She extended her wings out as parachutes against the wind. Her body jerked back as it decreased her speed exponentially. Rainbow Dash continued flying forward, looking back to see Gilda fly off in another direction. She grunted in frustration and turned to follow her, but had already lost a lot of ground. Gilda looked back to see that she was gaining on her yet again. Seeing that she wasn't going to give up, she decided to make her. She dove down into the forest and began flying in between trees at the same speed, just teasing Rainbow to follow. Is she crazy? Dash said as she saw her friend dive into the forest. She begrudgingly zoomed in behind her. Once she broke the forest canopy, she caught up to Gilda and began dodging between thorns and low-hanging tree branches, covering them both in scratches. Gilda, please! I- Whoa! I just need to talk to you- Ah! Before we get hurt! She said as she barely dodged the thicker branches. I told you, I don't wanna hear it! She banked hard around a tree, causing Dash to cut the corner a bit too quickly, slamming head first into it. Finally, she said with a sigh of relief. With that taken care of, she flew out of the forest and resumed her leisurely flight back out of the area. She realized how hard Dash must have hit that tree and slowed down and looked back for a moment to ponder if she was okay. They may not have been friends anymore, but she didn't want Dash to get hurt because of her. As she tried to peek a bit more into the forest to see Rainbow's whereabouts, a cyan blur shot out from under her and grabbed her by the waist. Ugh, hey, what are you- Gilda couldn't finish as they both landed haphazardly in a meadow outside of Ponyville. Rainbow Dash rolled on top of her and pinned her down so that she couldn't get away this time. Gilda, please, just listen to me. Gilda thrashed under her, but it was no use. She had her pinned down quite well. I'm sorry, I I didn't mean to go off on you like that at the party. It's just, you were getting so mad at every pony for stuff that I did, and and you yelled at Pinky like that. I just just was looking out for my new friends, too. Rainbow said to try to reconcile. Yeah, well, you lost an old one in the process. Gilda spat out angrily and attempted to get away again. Gilda, don't say that. You're one of the best friends I've ever had. I don't want to lose you over something so stupid. Uh, You mean more to that than me. Gilda didn't want to look at her. 
She had just humiliated her in front of all her friends. It would take more than an apology just to fix it. Not much I'll do about it now, Gilda said. Well, I talked to my friends and they all said they would give you another chance. Why would I want that? Gilda looked up. Dad shook her head and backed off of Gilda, letting her stand. She thought about darting right there, but decided she didn't really want to lose her only friend if she could help it. I know it may not mean much, but we all still want to be friends. You just need to adjust your attitude. My attitude? What about- Gilda started before Dash cut off. Hey, sorry. We can fix all the problems we have. On both sides. Gilda rolled her eyes. Ugh. Fine. What's the catch? Well, you just have to apologize to Fluttershy. Rainbow knew how much Gilda hated apologizing, but her and her friends agreed it was the only way. That yellow loser? Why? Because you were the meanest to her when you were in town, that's why. What if I don't? Gilda put on a challenging glare. Please, she's the only one you will have to apologize to. Then we can hang out, you know, just you and me. I'll make sure Pinky steers clear. Then after that we can work with everyone else, okay? Ugh. She really didn't want to go through with this. But the prospect of being able to start over and even make some new friends pulled her into it. Fine. This better not take long. Awesome. It'll only take a second, G. Follow me. Dash flew into the sky, and Gilda reluctantly followed. Rainbow Dash landed in front of Fluttershy's cottage with a smile, and Gilda in tow. Alright, G, this is the place. Ugh, I think I'm gonna bail, she said as she tried to make a break for it. Rainbow grabbed her tail and pulled her back down to earth. Gilda, please, I promise it'll only take a second. Gilda crossed her arms and growled in frustration. Rainbow knocked a couple of times on the door. Flesh Eye, are you home? I need to talk to you. After a few moments of silence, the door creaked open and the timid mare peeked her head out of the door. Oh, hey Rainbow Dash, how are- At the sight of Gilda, Flesh Eye's eyes went wide and she immediately slammed the door in Dash's face. Ugh, oh, it's a waste of time, dude. Gilda said, just wait a sec, she'll, she'll come around. Flesh Eye, come on, she just wants to apologize for earlier. No response came from inside, so Rainbow decided to just try the door. In her haste, Flesh Eye forgot to lock it when she ran back in, so it opened without any trouble. Flesh Eye, where did she go? She said as she walked into the cottage, waving Gilda in to follow her. The room was dim as they walked in, the only sunlight being provided by what was able to pass through the door and close blinds. Rainbow Dash started looking around the usual hiding spots. Gilda's frustration only seemed to grow as they began to search for her. She didn't seem to get very far as they found a pink tail jutting out from under a chair. There you are. Now, come on, let's get this over with. Rainbow went over to her cowering figure and grabbed her tail and proceeded to drag her across the floor until she was in the middle of the room and right in front of Gilda. Go on, tell her, Rainbow said. Gilda looked down at her. She had her head buried under her hair and hooves and was shaking like a puppy in a thunderstorm. She sighed and opened her mouth to say something, but nothing came out. She didn't really know what to say to her. She was probably so struck with fear, she wouldn't hear her anyway. Dash rubbed a hoof on her chin, then walked out towards the door. Gilda looked at her incredulously. What are you doing? She said in a harsh whisper. I'll just leave you two alone. Maybe a little privacy will help you along. Just meet me back in town whenever you're done. The door shut and just left the two of them in the room together. Gilda looked back at Flush Eye. She really hadn't changed much. She was still shaking violently and cowering on the ground. The tension did feel a bit relieved when it was just the two of them. 
since Gilda wouldn't have to swallow her pride in front of her oldest friend. She swallowed and tried to search for the right words. Listen, Flesh, I, I'm sorry about the whole making you cry thing. I was just really annoyed by some other things, and you just happened to be the one I took it out on. She let out a breath. That was about as heartfelt as it got coming from her. Flesh Eye gave signal that she even heard her. She just laid in the same position, cowering. Gilda gave a frustrated groan. She moved down to lay by Flesh Eye to get on her level. Flesh Eye, please, could you just forgive me already? This is all I need to do to get dashed and I to be friends again. I'll do anything. Flesh Eye peeked one eye out of her hair to look at Gilda. Anything? She whispered out. Yeah, sure. Well, there is one thing. Flush I stood up gingerly and kept a steady eye on Gilda, her demeanor changing suddenly. Just name it. Just a sec. Flush I moved into the kitchen and grabbed something that Gilda couldn't see. Gilda rose off of the floor and waited for her to return and awkwardly looked around the apartment to pass the time. It was fairly normal, save from all the tiny steps and birdhouses everywhere. Fluttershy trotted back in with a blank look on her face. She held a small rag under her wing. Gilda didn't pay much attention to it. Gilda, could you just tell me one thing? Uh, sure. Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? Huh? Mm. Flush I shot forward and wrapped the cloth in her wing around Gilda's beak. Gilda thrashed around, trying to grab for something, or to tear into her wings, or do anything to get out of Flush Eye's continually strengthening grasp. It was no use, however, as her strength quickly faded, and her world became dark. Gilda opened her eyes, only to find that she didn't have much to see. A blindfold masked her vision. She could feel cold concrete beneath her paws, and her arms were tied up to the ceiling by what felt like hard leather straps. The position made her have to stand on her back legs while her chest opened up forwards, an ass sticking out. Spread eagle, if you will. She thrashed around in her bonds, attempting to pry them loose or cut through them. It was to no avail. The leather was extremely tough. The blindfold was jerked off of her head to reveal Fluttershy. Only this time, she wore black leather stockings on her back leg and fishnet across her forelegs, accompanied by leather belts and straps, whatever it seemed fit. Instead of butterflies, her cutie mark now showed a studded leather collar, one that Gilda now felt aware of around her neck, tied to the ceiling by a thick rope as well. Her eyes darted around the room. The walls were adorned with whips, chains, and many sexual instruments, large and small. The torchlight off of the brick walls made it feel like a dungeon. Then, Gilda figured out that was probably on purpose. What? What's the big deal, Dwee? Let me out of here! She said with an assented thrash of her bonds. A small rabbit placed a blindfold in the corner and picked up a whip off the wall and handed it to Fluttershy. Thank you, Angel. Now, you are to only call me as Master from now on. You will also only speak when spoken to. Fluttershy marched around to Gilda's backside with whip and hoof. Seriously, Fluttershy, could you just... Uh... Flush I cracked the whip across Gilda's flank, sending it aflame with pain. Gilda grimaced and fought back tears. She hit hard for a pony her size. As master to you, slave. Slave? Flush I, this isn't f Ah! The whip cracked across her backside again. This time, she let out a yelp as to create a similar stinging streak across her opposite flank. She jumped up and flapped her wings, causing her to smash into the ceiling with a resounding thump before going limp against her bond. I'm going to have to punish you for that one. First, we're going to make sure you don't hurt yourself. That's my job. She trotted forward and picked up a fishnet vest 
with leather straps out of a basket filled with various pieces of leathery clothing. Gilda could only sit there, panting, as Fluttershy wrapped the vest around her and strapped the belts tight against her wings. They certainly weren't going anywhere now. Now, you will call me master. No, let me out of... The whip cracked across her backside. A moan of agony escaped her beak. That one cut into the flesh. I will continue this until you are obedient. Flush, I please, I'm begging. The whip cracked again, and again, and again. Gilda couldn't hold back the tears now. She squawked in agony at every strike. Okay, okay, master, Gilda said, defeated. She exhaled painfully. She could feel blood trickling down her flanks and onto her paws. Her flanks stung worse than if she had just gotten sworn by three angry beehives. That is more like it. Now we may begin. Flush, I said, as she went over to a drawer and brought out a tube of some sort. She held out her hoof and squeezed the substance onto her hoof with a resounding squirt. Gilda looked back to see what was about to happen behind her. Flush, I pushed her head back with the end of the whip. Uh, 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 no peeking. Flush, I pushed her hoof into Gilda's nether regions, swirling around and coating everything with a thin layer of lubricant. Gilda immediately jerked back and seized her legs together. This caused Flush Eye's hoof to hang there for a moment. She simply stared at it as a drop of lube hit the concrete floor and mixed with droplets of blood. Oh no, that simply won't do. Flush Eye trotted over to the wall again and eyed her selection of restraining utensils. Flush Eye, what are you? Flush Eye idly cracked the whip with her wing against Gilda's flank again causing Gilda to cry out with pain as it stroked the fresh wound. M master what are you doing? Flush I grabbed an iron bar with two clamps on either side, then proceeded to grab what looked like a small black tree trunk with straps as well. Flush I made her way back over to Gilda's backside again and spread her back legs apart with her hoof. Out of fear of the whip, Gilda didn't resist. She only closed her eyes and hoped this would be over soon. That is better, but you spoke when not spoken to. I must punish you for that. She clamped the metal bar around her back legs, spreading them apart for an open view. Please, master. Flush, I silenced her with a hoof stroking across her clit. Gilda tried to fight back the waves of pleasure as Flush, I traced circles around the most sensitive part of her vagina. Gilda attempted to stifle moans as Flush Eye increased her pace. It was no use. Gilda let out a groan of pleasure, even though her flank still streaked with pain. Without warning, Flush Eye thrust her hoof into Gilda, made easy by the excess of lube, but still threatening to tear the folds because of the suddenness of the signs. Ah, uh, master, that hurt. With a free wing, Flush I whipped the paddle across Gilda's flank, filling the room with a loud crack. Silence slain. Y yes master. Gilda lowered her head as the pain started to give way to pleasure. One of her hooves stroked her clit, while the other made passes against her inner walls. Gilda had never been penetrated by something so large before. As much as it hurt, as she continually thrust forward. Gilda found herself coming closer and closer to climax. Her moans grew louder and louder as Fluttershy increased her pace, silently working away into Gilda. After a particularly hard thrust, Gilda let loose. She came harder than she ever had before, dripping her fluids all over Fluttershy's face and the floor. She almost passed out from the exertion before Fluttershy haphazardly yanked her hoof out of her, then marching in front of her quite angry. How dare you come before I tell you to. You're getting it now. Gilda reeled back in fear as Flush I got in her face, then hopped right back down again and proceeded to strap the tree trunk to herself. Gilda only now realized what it was for. 
Please, master, anything but that, please. Gilda's eyes shot open in fear. Flush had seductively trotted over to Gilda. The strap on was so big it came all the way across her body and poked out near her neck. She stood up and caressed Gilda's face with a hoof on one side, then dug the tip of the whip across the other. Oh, don't be scared. Master is going to take good care of you. Gilda didn't feel any better. Flush had licked the tip of Gilda's beak seductively, then hopped down around her backside and began to light candles. What are those for? The whip cracked across her rump again, causing the tears to flow back. You'll find out, slave. Gilda whimpered as Fluttershy began to straddle her. The massive dildo pushed against her entrance, but wouldn't go in. Fluttershy grabbed Gilda by the neck and pulled her into it. Her mighty slurp, the dildo entered her. Gilda cried out in agony as she could feel it tear this time. Flush I slapped her across the flank with the paddle again, silencing her. She settled into stifled whimpers as Flush I began thrusting the extremely large member into her. She could only wait until the pain passed. Oh yes, that's what Master likes to see. Moan for me, slave. Gilda attempted to moan, but instead her voice cracked and only a pained whimper came out in his place. Flush, I slapped the paddle across her flank again and yelled it louder. Moan for me. Gilda allowed a louder moan this time. The thrust finally became more pleasurable than painful as Flush had continued. The moans came naturally as Flush had continued to drive the massive cock into her. Flush had leaned down and picked up a candle. She slowly dripped hot wax onto the base of Gilda's wings. Gilda mixed loud moans of pleasure and groans of pain to form even louder screams of ecstasy. Flush had grabbed Gilda's neck and pulled it to her, whispering right into her ear. Don't you dare come before I tell you to, or I will lash you raw. She said as she continued thrusting into her and dragging the whip across her flank. Gilda grimaced as she attempted to hold back her orgasm. Flush I traced a hoof under her and began to rub circles on Gilda's clit again. Her moans grew louder and louder until she didn't think she could take it anymore. Flush I grabbed all of the candles and held them over Gilda's back once more. Now, with the command given, Gilda released the new greatest orgasm she ever had. As soon as she started, Flush I started to tip all the candles over and pour hot wax all across her back. Gilda arched her back and convulsed violently. All the pain and pleasure overwhelmed her and simply fell limp against her bonds as her body continued to rock from the intense orgasm. Flush I threw a bucket of cold water across her face and she immediately came to. When she snapped awake, she found she was in the same position, but Fluttershy stood in front of her, missing her leather attire. I'm going to town. I'll be back in a couple of hours, then we may be able to resume our activities, she said matter-of-factly. What? I, I did what you wanted. Please, please let me out of here, Fl uh, I mean, Master, she pleaded. Oh no, what part of slave then you get? You're going to be down here for my amusement for a long, long time. Flush, I turned and trotted up the stairs on the left, opening the cellar door and immediately closing it behind her again. Gilda stared astounded. She couldn't even comprehend her new fate as Flush, I sex slave. She hung her head in defeat, hoping that maybe she would find a means of escape, but nothing came to her. A couple of minutes passed, a pink pony jumped out of the leather basket and hopped up to Gilda. P Pinkie Pie? What are you? Listen, you, got, you gotta help me out of here. Gilda screamed in desperation. Oh, I can't do that, silly. Then the writers won't have to make up another episode for you. And I'll just have to wait, she said as she happily bounced up and down. Uh, episode? What are you... 
Just listen. I'll, I'll do anything. Just please let me out of here. Hmm. Maybe in season four. But I don't know. Pinky said with a thoughtful look. Oh, please. Let me out of here now. Pinky ignored her as she trotted over to the wall and searched its contents. Knowing it was a lost cause, Gilda gave up trying to seek rescue from the crazy pink mayor. What are you even doing down here anyway? Gilda asked. Oh, I let Flush I borrow one of my toys. I just wanted to get it. Pinky hopped up to the wall and grabbed the handle of what looked like a chainsaw. But instead of blades and teeth, a massive dildo hung off of the end of the motor. Gilda's world was one of confusion and pain. Not being able to comprehend anything anymore, she fainted again. Flush had landed outside of Sugar Cube Corner. She walked in with a smile and ordered her usual, an oatmeal banana hush cupcake. She soon found Rainbow Dash in a corner of the restaurant and sat down to eat with her. Hey Flush Eye, how did it go? Rainbow Dash said hopefully. Oh, it went great. We had a great time together. I even showed her some massaging techniques. Flush Eye said that last part was a devious twist. But Rainbow didn't seem to catch on. Well, where is she? I thought she was going to come back up here with you. Oh, oh no. She had somewhere to be in a hurry. Flush Eye pulled out a pair of sunglasses from under her wings. She said she... Flush Eye snapped the sunglasses onto her face. Was about to be a bit tied up. <laughs> or whatever the uh, CSI sound is. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy. Uh, I mean, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, it's it's this it's just late, and I'm just a tad bit tired. Um, this was commissioned, and I just wanted to say, I just want to give a big thanks to the person who commissioned me. He, she would like to uh, remain anonymous, and so I, I respect that. Anyway, I, it's this one is um, a bit like um, what was that a witch confession? Yeah, it's a bit like that. It's really it's dark and um, it certainly isn't for everyone. But hey, you know, it takes all the colors of the rainbow to make a rainbow. <laughs> that was awful. I'm so sorry. It takes all the colors to make a rainbow. That's it. Oh, God, I really am tired. But, um, yeah, um, until next time, bye-bye.